Welcome, folks, to uh, Moonscapes for September 17th, 2013. It's a Tuesday night, uh, 7.53 p.m. Uh, we are completely dark. Sunset was uh, a few minutes before uh, 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, an important date? No, not really, except for me. Uh, tomorrow, um, I celebrate my 69th birthday, um, and I can look back to 57 years, a little over now, 57 years of doing amateur astronomy. Um, 57 wonderful years, I have to really say. Um, I was involved with a lot of other things uh, early on, uh, deep sky stuff with galaxies and research projects and such, all kinds of things. Uh, but retirement brings its own, its own kind of life. Um, gave up the house, the observatory, uh, uh, to move into retirement housing, which was a lot easier in my uh, poor old back here, which has been through an awful, awful lot. So I um, um, had to find something to do, and I picked up this moon project, which I've been doing now with you for, oh, since last uh, January, so uh, nine months now. Um, I believe this is Moonscapes number 20, and I have a night tonight which um, I was really looking forward to. Uh, uh, the subject on the screen before you, uh, we're going to talk about here in a second. I, I was looking uh, really forward uh, to getting uh, to this object tonight. Uh, the weather forecast I had uh, was phenomenal. It, um, called for very, very clear, transparent skies. Uh, with exceptionally, exceptionally good scene, um, which is a rarity. As I talked to you uh, during my last few videos, um, uh, normally when you get very, very transparent and clear skies, the scene is really not that good. Uh, and I should have known better than to believe that forecast, because as you can see, uh, we've got uh, quite a bit of wavering going on, a lot more than I was expecting. Uh, according to what I had gotten for a, a forecast, um, I was hoping for a little better scene than this. Um, I'm using tonight uh, uh, my uh, Orion uh, Atlas EQG mount, which is the big mount, because I have got the 10-inch telescope out there tonight. Um, and we are using uh, a new eyepiece that I've just gotten. Uh, it's a Mead. 6.5 millimeter ED eyepiece. Um, it's the second in the series of, of meat eyepieces that I've acquired. I have a 9 millimeter and now this uh, 6.5. Now, one thing uh, we have to remember though, if you look back at some of my other videos, uh, using a, a, a 6.5 like this and, and another times a 5 millimeter, uh, with my 5 inch telescope, we'd get much higher power. It sounds a little strange because we're using a much bigger telescope. Uh, but if you remember uh, and you've seen some of my past videos, this 10-inch is, is a 40-inch focal length telescope. It means it's f4. That's a short focal length. So these eyepieces are not going to give you the highest power, or not the a real high power like you get when I use my uh, Maxudov Cassegrain 5-inch because that's a 60-inch focal length. That's 20 more inches of focal length, which makes a big difference in power. With this 6.5 millimeter eyepiece, right now we're working before zoom um, with 156 power. If I were to use the 5 inch telescope, the Max Sudov Cassegrain, the same telescope would be giving us uh, in excess of 250 power. Uh, so there is a difference there. So I'm going to have a little less zoom. Um, I was hoping to have such great conditions tonight that I thought that maybe I might do a second video later um, and throw in a 2x or 3x Barlow. Um, now, I might do that yet because the moon is a little bit low. Uh, I'm, not, I'm just going to move around here. Let's just take a look at a few other things while I'm talking and we'll come back to this uh, field because I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Um, the... Uh, the uh, Moon is, is really, it's probably only, probably 15, 
uh, 20 degrees off the horizon. So it's still relatively low and in, in a, lot, a lot of murk. I mean, if I really to get the best image, uh, uh, I should wait really till the moon gets a lot higher in the sky. Um, but uh, that would mean waiting quite a bit later on in the night, and I, I, I really didn't want to do that. I wanted to get out and start working on this uh, tonight and, uh, and see what we can do with this Terminator. Now, this is a Terminator that I really, really like. We are less than 48 hours from full moon. The Terminator is now this very, very thin line way, way over um, uh, on the edge of the, the side of the moon. Uh, and we get a look at some of our favorite objects, but I, I noticed something uh, right away tonight. Uh, I love looking at the Marius Hills, and um, is, <laughs> the crater Marius is going to be plainly visible tonight, but the sun angle has changed on the moon by one day, and the hills really are not that visible. Um, and that's just uh, uh, an effect of the sun angle changing on the moon, and it just goes to show you that uh, the sun angle is very important. If you're looking for small, small details, uh, sun angle is very important, and a very, very low sun angle is going to show you a lot, lot more detail than a, a high sun angle. Okay, I'm going to go back to this, where I started, this uh, field right here that we're looking at, these two large, large craters. Um, and then there's one behind it that uh, we talked about one time before, but we really couldn't see it. And tonight we're going to see it much, much better, uh, except the scene's not as good as I'd like, as I said. Uh, just right of center is the huge crater Chicard. Um, and as I said before, I'm going to go to my uh, moon atlas here. Uh, I want to get you the dimension. I know it, it's a very huge crater. Um, it's 137 miles in diameter, and as again, as I mentioned, as we looked at this crater about a month ago, uh, notice its floor. It's it's noted for um, uh, the banding in the floor, the two dark regions. Um, uh, on the, you got one on the uh, right side and one uh, down near uh, oh the six seven o'clock side of the crater uh, on the left hand side. You see that dark patch. And near the center, it's it's fairly, you know, fairly bright. Uh, and if I try, let me see, I, I am in auto right now. Um, color intensity is rather low. Let's up that a little bit and see if that does anything here in this area. Uh, not a lot. It's giving us a little blue. Uh, let's just for a second take off the auto. And let's see if I uh, play around with the settings, if, if I can do a little, little better with this. Um, not real. I'm not having a lot of luck. Uh, uh, we can darken it up a little bit there. It gives you a little, little better view there. Um, and then over to the left of that, there's uh, what looks like, well, let me, uh, looks like, like a double crater. There's a real big crater with a small one kind of stuck in its side at about the uh, 4 o'clock position. Um, the larger those two craters is Phyllocelinus, uh, which is, um, uh, let's see, uh, that's 69 miles in diameter. But the smaller one embedded in its side at about the 4 o'clock position is Nesmith. Uh, and that's actually named uh, for an astronomer from the, oh, about the mid-1800s. He was... Uh, Noted for his uh, mechanical ability, and he he built some uh, very very nice telescopes, and, and was very much interested in the moon, um, and did a lot of work uh, on the moon. And he produced some. I actually have a copy of his book uh, in my bookcase. Uh, it comes from about eighteen. Oh, I think eighteen seventy five to eighteen eighty in there somewhere, and he had put together some of the most beautiful. Uh, they're, I think they're like plaster of Paris models of craters. And they are exceptionally detailed and, and look very much like modern day pictures of the craters. Um, but they do have a tendency to be very much more pointed. In other words, the, the mountain ranges uh, and the peaks uh, are very sharp and, and like taller standing spires. 
Um, and that was very typical of drawings uh, back in the 18 and early 1900s uh, until we got close to photography and actually went to the moon. And um, as rugged as this terrain is, uh, we had a tendency to exaggerate it. And again, that, that was caused by the sun, the sun angle, um, throwing those long, distinct shadows. Uh, so it kind of threw us off a little bit. Now, this area, what I really wanted to show you is behind those two craters that we just talked about. Now, unfortunately, I'm zoomed in pretty much. Yeah, I'm zoomed in. That's the top zoom I can go. And unfortunately, uh, you can see we've got uh, bad wavering. Uh, the scene is a much, much worse than I was hoping for. Um, but behind Chicard and Nesmith and that other large crater, you see that what looks like a circle behind it? Um, that is actually the crater Worthington. And that, that we tried to observe that about a month ago, and, and the sun was just rising on it, and we did not get a good view of it. Uh, here it is in full sunlight, and that is one of the most strange, one of the most strange, strangest objects on the moon. It's really a strange, strange crater. Uh, if you, just looking at it, comparing it to the surrounding craters, it, look at it, it has a different look to it. It doesn't look quite right. It looks like there's something wrong with it. And what it is, is that the theory is that it was formed by an impactor, like most of these craters were. Um, but when the impactor hit there, that it caused a lava flow, and the crater filled very slowly with lava, and it kept filling and filling and filling, and almost right up to the brim uh, before it stopped and overflowed into the surrounding plains. It stopped and solidified, and so what you end up with is, um, which is almost a very, very large, low uh, uh, devil's tower type of feature. Um, it's, it's a very, very large, um, let me let me see. Uh, I mean, offhand, I don't know the diameter of that. Uh, let me see. The diameter of that is 51 miles, and it's basically a raised plateau. Uh, let me see if the description here in my atlas gives the height of that. Hold on one second. Um, my voice has probably trailed off because I'm over by my uh, atlas. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's got all kinds of information here. Okay. Height, hmm, let's see, 51 miles, uh, height, they have 900 feet, I, it's, it's almost 1,000 feet high, um, so that, that's one big cup of lava, that's basically what it amounts to, it looks like almost like a, a, a filled cup of uh, tea or coffee on the, it's lava, and, and to me, that is always one of the most strangest features on the moon. Um, the sun angle is a little high there tonight, uh, higher than we got last time. And I don't think I'm looking very hard, but I can't see, uh, maybe on a large screen tomorrow, on the, on the surface of, of Worthington, there are uh, two ridges, and, and they form almost a Y-shaped um, structure uh, if they show up well. But the sun has gotten a little bit high in that area, a little higher um, you know, than it does at sunrise. And uh, as soon as that sun gets a little altitude, those ridges disappear. So they really don't show up that well tonight. Um, but I, I remember stumbling on this feature as a youngster when I first got into astronomy. And I couldn't wait until I got an actual look at it through a telescope. And it, it was just amazing to see it firsthand. Uh, even though at the time I was only using a small three, uh, three inch telescope. Uh, I'm going to back out and give you a more general view of this whole area here. Uh, and as we do that, we'll take a look and see if any color um, comes into view. I'm getting some blue off to the side, which I don't like to trust when it's way over near the edge like that. Another thing I'm doing right now is testing the zoom of that eyepiece. And it's pretty darn good. Okay, there's the edge of the field. Let me see if I can move that over. I can. And I still have... Um, so, I've got... Okay, let's say if we start there, I have one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve levels of zoom with that 6.5 millimeter Mead eyepiece. They are a fantastic uh, buy for the money. Um, they are $79.95, $80. They're $80 a piece. Um, the eyepieces that I've been using mostly for this series are $140 Orion Stratus eyepieces. Um, and they are 68 degree eye, uh, eyepieces, which means they have a larger um, apparent field of view. And uh, the, this, these meat eyepieces are hanging right in there with them and doing every bit as good, if not a little better. Uh, notice right there on the edge that elongated crater. Uh, I have no idea what that is. Let me see if I go to my atlas so I can figure out what that is. Yeah, I, I think I've located it. Um, yeah, it's off the back of, uh, let me see, that structure, Nesmith and Worthington and Chicard. That crater is Bailey, uh, and I do not think it's Bailey G. I think that's a small crater that's inside Bailey. I think the entire structure is Bailey. Let me uh, see if I can get this Bailey H. Ba uh, you know, it's like I said, this, this computer is great. It gives you, but if there's little crater pits in the, fail, uh, in, in the floor and you hit it, um, it gives you, uh, it gives you those. Um, and I'm not so sure uh, it's displayed well. It, that long structure is displayed on the map. Uh, but it's giving me Bailey G, 11 miles, so that can't be it. Um, if I come over to the other side of it, that's still Bailey A, 22 miles. Uh, Bailey G, I, 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 I don't know, I don't understand it. It, it looks like it could be a, a number of craters chained together to make one long formation like that. Uh, but that's a bit of a strange, strange uh, bit of feature. Let's, uh, let's move around a little bit here. Um, we're, we're actually headed towards uh, the southern uh, South Pole region of the moon. It's going to get very, very bright. Let's uh, drop this back to auto. The auto should do a better job of bringing in this area of the moon. And, uh, and we get a, if we get away from the edge a little bit, it'll do a little better. There we go. There we go. There's Tycho. Look at it right over the corner of the field. Right, just just almost out of the, the lower left-hand corner of the field. Uh, our old friend Tycho, and right away you can see that ray structure. You can see see the, the structure of rays uh, extending out from it. Uh, I want to get a little deeper into the into the disk um, and see. Uh, you can see the auto doing its thing as we drift into different areas of the moon. Here comes those dark areas near the center of the disk, um, the ones that were thought to be vegetation, and of course they're not. Um, and there's that, there's that double, double raid feature. Um, and there goes a bird, yeah, and yes, it was a bird. <laughs> I know some people like to think there's UFOs, but uh, no, that was a bird. I, I don't know. I, I, when I first doing these video, started doing these videos out here, I, I, I went months and I didn't see a single one. And then all of a sudden, um, I've had a number of them. I don't know whether it's a change of season. We're going into the fall season here in Connecticut or what it is. But uh, I know my last video, I had a ton of them. They, then there goes another one. Um, that was much closer. You can see it was almost out of focus. It was so close. Uh, okay, let's keep going along here. I want to get down. You know what? We're we, we're zoomed way way in. Let's 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 get this back out. Um, give us a better view of the. Uh, see now, here's what I'm saying about the the color. Looks pretty normal, except that upper left hand corner, which has that purple look to it. Um, that I think is aberration from the edge of the field. Um, 
if I went out there and spent some time, I might be able to reposition the camera a little bit and kind of eliminate some of that, but uh, I'm not going to bother with that right now. Um, uh, we're a little too, see, and now we're zoomed uh, in a little too far. We got uh, a little bit of the vignetting, so. Okay, let's let's go down. I want to go down, uh, I, I want to show you the um, Morris Hills region. I want to show you what I'm talking about there. Let me speed up the zoom here. It's just a little bit slow for me to get where I want to go. Um, the Morris Hills are a fascinating, fascinating area, and I really love looking at them, but uh what a difference one night makes. Um, look at that. That's some nice detail right along the Terminator there. That's just absolutely gorgeous. I love looking at edge detail like that. But uh, right now I want to get down to... There, there, is, there is Kepler. Okay, there's Kepler. And there's Morris. I see Morris is right behind Kepler. Um, but, uh, let me uh, get, find my mouse here. Let's zoom in. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We're zoomed out quite a bit right now. Okay, and then we're going to have to I'll leave it about there. And I want to move Kepler over a bit. Okay. And I just want to make sure. I want to make sure. I, I can't believe that one lunar day makes this much difference in this feature. Um, Marius... And let me make sure that I've got, I didn't mix up the craters, because there's a couple craters there that are, are similar. Um, okay, there's Marius, right behind Kepler, is that it? Yes, it is, okay. Um, Kepler is dead center, it's the one that's got the, the small uh, ray pattern around it. And Marius is to the upper right of it, um, and you know, you know what, I'll even center it a little better, so Marius will be almost right in the center, and then there won't be any any doubt about what we're talking about. Okay, Morius is just about dead center on the screen now. Kepler's lower left. Morius is uh, uh, behind it and up going towards the upper right-hand corner, dead center. And I'm looking very, very carefully at that. In fact, I've even got a magnifier glass on my uh, preview screen, because my preview screen is still rather small. And... I can only see the very tiniest of hints of those hills. They're, they're really not really visible. And if we were out here last night, those hills would have standed out. You know, they would have stood out like a sore thumb. Uh, we did do them uh, uh, several times when the, the sun angle was low. And you can really, really see them. In fact, I compared them to what, to, uh, what coarse sandpaper looks like when the, you put a, a very sh um, uh, sharp sun ang angle on uh, there they go, and the birds are flying. A um, sharp angle, and you get all those shadows from the coarse pieces of uh, you know, the coarse sandpaper. Uh, but we don't see it tonight because the sun angle has changed just enough uh, where we've lost a shadow on those um, uh, uh, cinder cones, and we don't we don't see them. So uh, that, that's that's interesting. Uh, it goes from a very very interesting feature to just a uh, Run in the mill crater with not much else going on around it in just one day. Um, it's really something. Um, I want to uh, go on and go on down to our well, my one of my favorite areas, the Schroeder Valley in our Aristarchus area, right there. They're centered now, and uh, let me. Uh, I keep on losing my mouse. <laughs> There it is. Okay. Um, we're about half zoom. Let's get a little more zoom here. Uh, see, it, uh, it always amazes me. Um, I mean, Aristarchus is a, a really, really bright crater. Um, and, and, of course, as, as we've talked about before, it's a very, very young impact crater. In fact, I think I got the age. If I bring it up on my computer, it may give me the age of that. Let's see if it does. Hmm, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, should give me somewhere in here. Yeah, here we go. It's uh, according to this information I have on my uh, computer atlas, it's a young formation, approximately 450 million years old. Um, I know <laughs> to the average man in the street, 450 million years is not young, 
But when we come to uh, features on the moon, it, it's very young. And uh, that's why it is so brilliantly white. And notice here, we're getting a nice, nice color. We're getting that greenish, the greenish um, brown. Um, and, uh, and then out on the floor to the left, um, you got some more coloration going on there. And, and the Mara floor themselves take on a... Um, it's not it's not a drab uh, gray. It has a, a, a greenish blue or bluish tinge to the, the surrounding area. Uh, very very attractive feature on the moon. Um, let's uh, let me see. I don't know if I've, I've got a little bit of zoom left on here. Uh, okay, we're in now. We're in all the way. Uh, Schroeder's Valley's there very nicely. Uh, uh, but again, uh, we're losing some detail here tonight because the sun angle has gotten a little bit high. Um, that's why I was saying this 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 area of the moon, you've you've got to work it really quick. You've only got a couple of days, um, and I, like I said, in less than 48 hours. And yes, I did see that. That was another bird. Um, the moon will be full, and and all this detail that we're looking at right now just totally disappears. Um, so. You don't get much time to look at this area of the moon, and, and it's one of the most interesting to me. I've always really loved this area. I'm going to go down to the Sinus Iridium area and take a look at that. Uh, here we go. Sinus Iridium, the whole complex, which is uh, uh, a backward C-shaped, uh, is Sinus Iridium. Uh, it looks a little... A little overblown, and we're on auto. Let, let's shut the auto off. Let's see if we can uh, make that look a little. Oh man, that's not going to work. Let's drop down the gain just a hair. And boy, you just touch it, and it goes. Uh, and we'll play with the exposure. Whoa, we don't want to go there. Bring the exposure down, down. Uh, okay, well, I guess we're stuck with about there. It's uh, brightness. What happens we do with the brightness? I think we bring the brightness down a bit. Yeah, that helped a little bit. And contrast. Uh, there we go. I had a little contrast. There, now. Look at, very interesting, the, the floor. Look at, look at, across sinus iridium, almost straight from uh, the two points is uh, that greenish blue, and then, uh, I mean, the the, the greenish brown and then above that it's that nice nice blue now the two points um, of, uh, of this area let's see is uh, uh, I want to uh, check something um, yeah sinus iridium but I'm, I want to check the two points you have uh, the top point of the sea is Promontory Herculeides, and the bottom one, I believe, is Promontory, yes, Laplace. Um, and if you remember, the top point, Promontory Herculeides, Herculeides, is the one that um, in the 1800s was... Uh, uh, tagged to be the head of a woman under just the right conditions. I don't know if you can see it. We're zoomed in pretty good, so I guess we're not going to get a much better look at it. Um, I do want to take a look at that color, though. We're getting, we're getting a very nice, uh, nice color here. Uh, this is really okay. No, it doesn't. It doesn't show up that well tonight. Um, on very good nights, uh, the upper part of Sinus Iridium, the, 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 the one up on top, the top part of the backward sea, um, the head would, would be just that little tiny point at the end. Uh, the face of the woman would be looking down towards the bottom with the top of her head facing uh, to the left of the image and her hair would flow back uh, up towards the top of the image. Um, and as I say, I, I've seen some real neat old maps where the artwork on this area has really been uh, uh, 
really, really pretty interesting and, and uh, very attractive drawings, I have to say. Um, there's a crater that's uh, uh, buried right in the edge of uh, Sinus Erudium, uh, right at the, almost the midway point of the sea, kind of just in that little mountain range there. That's uh, Bonacci, 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 <laughs> it's another one of those where, yeah, take, take a stab at it. Anyway, it's a 23 mile wide crater. There's some nice, nice crater structure back there. Um, this is the, the North Pole area of the moon, and um, the problem with trying to work these areas is, though, when you go to the maps, um, I mean, you see beautiful detail here. Um, but uh, the maps, when it gets to the edge, the edge detail, they're not well documented, and, and it's kind of hard to uh, 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 see just what craters are what there on the very, very edge. Um, I'm liking this color we're seeing right now. I see we're already 31 minutes in, and I want to back out, and I want to take a little different look at the... Uh, center of the moon and see how that color is doing with it now we can really get a great look at the look 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 at the uh, ray pattern from the crater Copernicus um, it just about fills the screen uh, that is that is really really beautiful and uh, if we keep going up a little bit we'll, we'll include uh, Kepler's ray system. Okay, you got Copernicus is on the bottom, and then you've got uh, Kepler's is on the top. Uh, we'll center those up a little better. There they are. Um, those those are really 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 nice features. Um, you know, and if I didn't know better, I would say the uh, scene looks like it has gotten a bit better. Um, if that is the case, I may try a Barlow. Um, and come back and do another video. Um, it does look like, to me, anyway, like the scene has gotten noticeably better. Another bird. Um, I do not see the movement that we got earlier. And the best way to do that is let, let's go up to... Um, Chicard and Worthington, where we started out, where you know you could really see that wavering when we were doing that, and we'll compare with what you know what we're seeing now to when I first started, and if it looks like we've got some improvement, I when I go off the air on this one, I may throw in a Barlow, and if it looks like I've got good enough images, uh, I just may try another video. Definitely does look better. Um, let's move in. Uh, we still got some wavering. Uh, there's still some wavering. What I may do, another bird, boy, I tell you, fall's coming, they're, getting, they're starting to flock. Uh, what we've got here is uh, uh, a little bit of improvement. So, what I might do is, is take some stills some uh, images to process later on. Uh, that'll give the moon a little more time to rise a little higher. And when I get to that point, if, um, if it's just looking better, um, I may try throwing a Barlow in and come back with um, another video of, of this particular area right here and see if we can get a little better look at it. The only thing I'm afraid of is if I, if I double the power up, um, we're going to double this this wavering that we're getting too. You, you just can't get away from that. That's one thing. I mean, you can go as high as you want with the power, but it, uh, the telescope will only take so much before the image gets mushy. Um, and unfortunately, the atmosphere has a lot to do with that. Uh, and the atmosphere will even limit um, to what you what you uh, are going to see. Uh, uh, it, to me, it looks like it's a bit better than when we first started. Um, and it may continue to get better as the moon gets higher. Um, so I, I guess that's what I'll do. Uh, I'll end this now. Um, take some singles, uh, single shots, take some different uh, shots of the moon and 
different areas that uh, I can process and work on later. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll give a Barlow a shot, and if I come up with anything that's really good, maybe I may throw together another quick video. Um, we'll see. We'll just have to see how it goes. Um, anyway, this this will be my last video for this moon cycle. We, like I say, we're, we're coming up to a almost full moon, uh, so this cycle is about over. I, I don't generally go into the early morning to get the moon um, later in its cycle, uh, mainly because uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> tomorrow these old bones turn 69, and uh, it's starting to get a, to be a chore. As I said, I'm using the 10-inch tonight. And uh, that's about 100 pounds worth of equipment. It takes a while to set it up. And don't forget, when I'm done, guys, I have to break this all down and put it away. <laughs> I can't leave it up like I did my observatory. And, yes, I did see that one. That was another bird. They are really active tonight. Um, so with that, okay, guys, I'm going to leave you. And um, if I don't come back with another short video, uh, we'll see you next month with the next cycle. Uh, get as many as I can in before we start to get really, really cold weather. As I said, I'm going to lose that uh, heated shed I had. Um, I'll get as much done as I can in the fall. And I've got some ideas for some winter work until uh, the weather will start re warming in the spring. Um, but we've got a couple of good months to go yet where we can, uh, we can really get some nice work done. Uh, so with that, guys, I'm going to say um, uh, good health, clear skies, and... Uh, We'll see you again soon, guys. Take care.